And welcome back to the Cover 3 podcast here on CBS Sports. That's Barton Simmons. I'm Chip Patterson. Breaking news. That's why you see the siren. That's why we're here for an emergency podcast as Ohio State, Michigan. The game set for this Saturday. The game has been canceled due to positive COVID-19 tests and the protocol that it ensues from those tests within the Michigan program. Now, Michigan had been on pause for a while, and earlier this week, we thought as though we might have some positive momentum towards playing this game with, quote, light workouts being approved for Michigan, but we sit here, and now uh, the, the news is official, Barton. Lots of different ways to attack this. Uh, there's three main pillars that I want to get to. Number one, uh, the Big Ten championship side of this. Number two, the college football playoff side of this. And then number three, the uh, fantasy unrealistic, can we get Ohio State and Texas A&M to play against each other this weekend types of matchups and scenarios. So first from the Big Ten conference, Big Ten championship, Ohio State, let's start hyper local here. What do you think this means and what do you think the messaging is in and around that Buckeyes program? I think things are less frantic right now because of, and not that they would be frantic in the building, but in terms of just, if you're an Ohio state supporter, I think things are less frantic right now because of the way they beat Michigan state last week. Mm -hmm. Um, It's that's what our most recent vision and and visual of Ohio state is. And it was an impressive, what what was it like 52 to 10? What they beat them. Is that right? And the, uh, uh, and it was a reversal of so many of the concerns that had come up from uh, inside the game against Indiana, right? Like mm-hmm. you go from uh, Justin Fields having three interceptions to playing really clean game. And like even beyond just playing a clean game, I mean, he was the difference maker. He was the, the biggest reason that they won. Uh, the defense didn't get picked apart through the air. 52 to 12, 40 point win. So... I think that, the, and, and remember, that was a game where they were playing without a bunch of key pieces, including three starting offensive linemen um, because of COVID concerns players. themselves. How many? 23. Yeah. So Ohio State's the best team in the Big Ten. Now, I guess it hurts them a little bit that Wisconsin lost last week to Indiana because now their sort of consolation game in the Big Ten championship might not be quite as – compelling I don't know who would they who would they even get whether it's Wisconsin or Iowa uh, but I, I think that the idea that Ohio State needs to have Big Ten champ next to its name to get into the college football playoffs is absurd if you want to say well what like how can you put anyone in that's only played six games all right I will entertain that but they certainly don't have to have Big Ten champ next to their name when they've been everyone assumes they're the best team in the conference and they played like the best team in the conference. And with that said, like the only thing they're missing is just a game count. So uh, I still think Ohio state is in a strong position given the Phil Steele preconceived bias that the committee works within. Without a doubt. Now, Barry Alvarez last weekend on Fox's pregame show indicated that he was in favor of the Big Ten changing up some of its, uh, you know, some of its rules requiring what they take, changing that minimum games played limit so that Ohio State could get in. I mean, he, he said it very clearly. They're up there in the top four. We as a conference need to be doing what we can do to get them in there. Uh, you, mi- I agree with you because Ohio State, hasn't Ohio State been in the college football playoff without being a Big Ten champion? Uh, was that the Penn State year? 2016. So I I agree with you that they don't need it, but there is still that, um, you know, that belief in there that that's the next step here. And we do know that the big 10 athletic directors are scheduled to meet at 8 AM on Wednesday morning. Now this is a a regularly scheduled meeting and you know, that's not going to necessarily be something where uh, I think that We even have to wait for that because I do believe there's a chance that this could be something that even happens later today where the the rankings would be adjusted. And so I ask you this, is that fair to Indiana, a team that just beat Wisconsin, a team that's won all the rest of its games and has met the requirements so far to be able to play for a Big Ten championship? What do you think, Chip? I know you're posing the question. I know you are, you are facilitating conversation here, but 
do, do what do you think? I think Ohio State. If they would, I think Ohio State. Like, should do you think the, the Ohio State beat Indiana? Indiana should not be right. in the, in Ohio, Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, ultimately, even the like the whole idea of conference championships is is it's it's kind of imaginary. Like we're, we're we're just trying to find the best teams in college football, especially this year. We're just trying to find the best teams, and so. I don't know, like Ohio State, it, it would be a one thing if Ohio State wasn't beating people convincingly. Early in the season, they weren't beating people as convincingly as we had expected, maybe. I mean, they were still two and two against the spread uh, in those first four games. But, I mean, they're the best team in the conference. Like, it's just, it's it's obvious. It's not, it's like, this isn't, it's not close. It was the 2016 team, made the college football playoff, but did not play for the Big Ten championship. You're 100% right. They don't need Big Ten champion to be considered, but I'll say this. I think that playing Northwestern and running it up on Northwestern might not carry the same cachet as playing Iowa or playing Wisconsin in one of those non-championship games. Now, I don't think the athletic directors are going to try to go through that. They're not going to game it out that far. They're going to be very straightforward, and they're going to say, look, this is the best team in our conference. We should not keep them from playing for the conference championship because of this rule that we put together in a season that it, you cannot call it anything else. It was put together hastily. It was done very, very, very hastily. And now you're dealing with one of the predicaments, uh, yet another one, in addition to some of the really strict protocols with the 21 day absence. This is another one where you got to show some flexibility here. In the same way that the ACC athletic directors got together and realized that they didn't want to have uh, any kind of issues uh, in terms of tiebreakers, allowing Miami to jump in and keep us from getting that Notre Dame Clemson uh, rematch. I think that those Big Ten athletic directors are going to gather together. I think that they're going to change the rules so that Ohio State can play for a Big Ten championship. But again, me gaming it out much farther than anyone else is, I do think running it up on Northwestern is not going to carry the same uh, – it's not going to look as impressive on paper, though it will be, and I will admit this, on a much – it'll be on a big stage at least with all the pomp and circumstance of the Big Ten championship. I think – it, uh, to me, it does, like it doesn't even matter at this point. I mean, Northwestern in a Big Ten championship game, Wisconsin or Iowa in a in a consolation game of some sort. It does like they're. I feel like they're all going to hit the same. I feel like they're all going to hit the same it, as long as you put a number on them. If you yeah. if you mess around with any of those teams and if you survive, then that's not going to be a great look. Then then it is. Then you do have to really start digging in to Ohio State versus Texas A&M. But if you are, if, if I mean, if, if they put a number on whoever they play, I don't think it matters. So Ohio State, as far as we can tell, healthy and could play this weekend. Ole Miss and Texas A&M, that game is not going to be played because of COVID issues within the Ole Miss program. Do you think, we're sitting here on Tuesday, there's two levels to this. Do you think, number one, Ohio State and Texas A&M would agree to a BYU-Coastal Carolina-like showdown? And number two, would the Big Ten allow it? The first, the, the, the first question, I think, tell me if you agree with this. I think Texas A&M has more to gain by, that, by taking that game than Ohio State does. Do you think that's a true statement? I definitely agree. Like, I don't think because of the things we just talked about, I don't know that Ohio, like Ohio State doesn't need to, you know, take a last minute uh, equipment bus trip across the country to play a game like BYU did Coastal. Like, they don't, they're still in the four. Mm -hmm. They got to get pushed out of the four. Like, someone's got to give them a reason to not be in the four. So, because of that, I just, I don't really know why Ohio State would risk it. Now, if you're Texas A&M, you got to do something here. I mean, I think you're sitting on the outside looking in. You're a long shot to make it in. And sure, I guess if Ohio State's willing to play you, maybe you take a shot at that one. But I'm not even necessarily convinced that Texas A&M would want that game because right now they can just sort of 
preach their case. Blow and, out Tennessee on December 19th. Yeah. And, and sit there and, um, you know, hope there's enough chaos to where they can sit there and say, well, we beat Florida and we haven't, you know, and, and so the, the only team we lost to is the number one team in the country. How are we not in this thing? And so I think, I think I, I would suspect that they, they look, I think that they have a better chance of making it in the playoffs by pleading their case based on their current resume than chances that they do actually beat Ohio State. Mm -hmm. I get if they beat Ohio State, then they have a great case. So you're saying, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm trying to get inside Barton's brain here. So you're saying that they have maybe, what, a 10 to 15% chance to make the college football playoff right now. Sounds right. And their chances of beating Ohio State are like 5 to 10. Right. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, now this, maybe maybe Ohio State maybe maybe A and M feels a little bit more confident than that, um, but that's kind of where I'm at. For Ohio State, uh, I think that they lose. Uh, one of the big things that they lose from losing the Michigan game is losing what I think was probably going to be a 30 point win in a game watched by everybody. You know, like I I absolutely think that um, they were going to run the score up. And it was going to be the kind of opportunity. I mean, that Michigan defense, the way it's been picked apart, was going to get shredded by Justin Fields. And so whether it's Ohio State's college football playoff, uh, you know, the shine, whether it's Justin Fields trying to make a late charge into the Heisman Trophy discussion, there are a lot of style points that are going to be left on the table by not getting a chance to play in a game that everybody watches year in and year out. It's been going on since 1918, every single year. Everyone was going to watch that game and Ohio state was going to win by 30. And now they don't get that opportunity. That to me feels like the biggest loss here. What do you think? Do you, cause as I think a, let, let's say this, if Ohio, if, if Texas A&M beat Ohio state, they would probably be in, right? Yes. Okay. So what do you think? Do you agree with my, with my thought or do you, are you going to break this? Are you going to, um, kind of give me an, an altering viewpoint here does what's more likely to happen Texas A&M gets in as things play out the way they they currently are pacing or they beat Ohio State what's more likely I think it's more likely that they beat Ohio State yeah I do now that I think about it I, I, I kind of agree One with you. game the way that Texas A&M has been playing right now too like yeah. Ohio State's had the pauses the breaks and you know when we think about like trajectory and teams hitting their stride at the right time of the season Texas A&M started the year 17 to 12 against Vanderbilt. And just last Saturday, it dominated Auburn in Jordan Hare stadium wire to wire. I think they're playing the best football right now. I'll say it. Buckeyes don't want that smoke. I think the thing, the thing with, with A&M though, is um, they are like, I, I think that they're a team that's capable of beating just about anybody. I mean, to the extent that anyone could beat Alabama, may, maybe, maybe you could exclude, the tide there, but uh, I do think that they are, I, as I think about it, I, I would pull back my initial comment there. I think they are capable of beating Ohio state, especially because they are capable of playing like a, a really good brand. Like they're capable of, of leveling up and, and sort of being on par with anybody. They just, they just have a lot of strong variants. Like they can play real bad too. Uh, and so I think that that's, that's kind of what, uh, what they're up against. What else are you expecting from Ohio state? Like we get, we will likely get them on championship weekend. Do you think it all, it comes down to a number? It's going to just come down to style points on this one. Yep. Yep. Sportsmanship be damned. It's time to start starting to start boat racing people. Okay. What does it mean for Michigan to not play this game? Do you think Jim Harbaugh is the coach of the Michigan Wolverines in 2021? I, I I would need to talk to someone with with a line to NFL front offices. I, I would I would need to know whether there's real actual interest from the NFL because I think if he could have a an exit strategy, he would take it. Right I now, just, I'm not sure what it is though. Well. I, I think right now things are, seem to be trending towards uh, Jim Harbaugh not getting released, but the NFL angle, again, I don't have a good lead on that either. Right now my vote is yes. 
I think Jim Harbaugh comes back next year. I think this whole renegotiated contract that's been reported with a lower buyout, maybe a little bit lower salary, but incentive structures. We'll see. But then he just becomes an NFL target every single year until the right job pops up. But for right now, not getting blown out by Ohio State and not getting another loss added to that greatly thing. your leverage in this renegotiated contract. So congrats sure. to Jim Harbaugh on this little bit of leverage that you got from this news. He is Barton Simmons. You can follow him on Twitter at Barton Simmons. You can follow me at Chip underscore Patterson. We will be back tonight. Instant reactions to the new college football playoff rankings. Barton, thank you very much. Yep.